We've all faced one. A threshold. A point of decision. A moment of choice. Do we stay or do we go? What awaits us on the other side? Will we cross the line from guilt to freedom? Fear to faith. From doubt to trust. From darkness to light. From death to life. So you're here. So you're here at the threshold. What will you do? What will you do? Good morning. I said good morning. How are we doing? It's great to be together uh, with all of you today. And I just wanted to begin. I know in the beginning uh, we talked a little bit about uh, yesterday being our Martin Luther King Day of Service. And uh, I just want to say a big thank you uh, to everybody who served yesterday at the shelter, everybody who came down to our Kingdom Kids. I believe we had over 100 people who had gone out into our community and served yesterday. And so that was really, really incredible. Thank you for being a light in this world. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Well, uh, today we're continuing a series called Crossover. Everybody say Crossover. 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 And uh, we're going to go on a journey today. And the best place to begin a journey in the Bible is the book of Joshua. And so we're going to continue in the book of Joshua today. Joshua means the Lord saves. Yeshua in Hebrew. It means the Lord saves. How many of you got snatched out of some stuff last year? Anybody? Yeah? How many of you God saved you from some stuff last year? Let me see a raise of hands. How many of you God saved you from yourself last year? Yeah, there we go. That's what we really needed saving from. God knows the truth. But uh, I want to go to this one specific spot and kind of work around it. It's in Joshua chapter 4. And uh, we want to welcome, obviously, we want to welcome all of our guests. Uh, we want to welcome all of our family. We want to welcome all of our, um, all of our friends. And it's just great to have you with us. If you would point your attention to the screen, let's look at the verse this morning in Joshua chapter 4, verse 10. It says, Now the priests who had carried the ark, that is the ark of the covenant, remained standing in the middle of the Jordan until everything the Lord had commanded Joshua was done by the people. They were in this moment, the people of God were crossing over through the Jordan River. This was the moment that they were crossing over into the promise that God had for them. And it says that just as Moses had directed Joshua, the people hurried over. Everybody say, hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Verse 11. And as soon as all of them had crossed, crossing over, the ark of the Lord and the priests came to the other side while the people watched. And I want to read uh, verse 11 just one more time because I think it's going to set us up for what I want to talk about today. It says, as soon as all of them had crossed the ark of the Lord and the priests came to the other side while the people watched. Uh, I want you to announce my title this morning. I want you to turn to your neighbor. Everybody turn to a neighbor, someone around you. Go ahead, turn to somebody around you. I know you don't like it. Some of you have some really not fun-looking faces on this morning. We're going to participate. Look to the person next to you. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Hello. Hello. From, the other side. From the other side. Turn to the neighbor that you neglected. Tell them, hello. hello. From, the From the other side. Go in and give 10 people a high five. Give 10 people a high five this morning. If you could join me in a word of prayer before we jump in to the Jordan this morning. Shh. Father, thank you for this morning. We want to ask that you would increase our faith today. God, that you would continue to increase our faith and take us into places that we never thought we could go. God, places that would not be possible to enter without you being with us. God, stretch us. Take us out of our complacency and our comfortability and take us into our calling this morning. 
I pray that your Holy Spirit would move in a powerful way, and I pray that at the end of this time, all we could do is lift our hands and worship to your son, Jesus, God. It's not about any one person in this room. It's always been about you, and it always will be about you. So I ask, God, that you would increase our faith. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hello from the other side. Let's go walking with Joshua. He's at a significant moment in his life. It's a transitional moment for Joshua. And uh, it takes a certain type of person to transition well. Does anybody know this? Uh, Some people are just not built for transition, for change. You know, it takes a certain type of person to move forward into something unfamiliar and strange. And I wonder if there are any of those types of people here today who are willing to embrace some uncertainty in your future to find freedom in God's presence. You know, I remember uh, this is a, slot, a couple weeks ago, I remember all the way back to New Year's. You remember that? Just kidding. Uh, you know, I remember growing up, and I remember the thought of New Year's was this, like, grand thing. It was something that I looked forward to. Maybe you remember that. Like, you wanted to be awake when the clock went from 11.59 p.m. to 12 a.m. Because it was like something would, magical would happen in that moment, right? It was just like you couldn't wait. And, uh, you know, this year, this past year, my wife and I, we were watching a movie, and uh, we fell asleep by 11 o'clock, and uh, we woke up around 11.58 with enough uh, energy to say, Happy New Year, and then go back to sleep right afterwards, and uh, it's exciting. Our lives are very exciting, and, um, but it's just funny, you know, how something that you had looked so much forward to when you were younger, is now just something like, yeah, it's just another day. And the reason I'm bringing that up is to say that most transitions are anticlimactic. Most transitions are anticlimactic. So there's more excitement and expectation leading up to a lot of events than, than there is when it actually happens. And then you're just kind of looking at it afterwards and you're like, oh, okay, that was cool. All right. Awesome. That was great. And I don't mean to talk about your wedding, but some transitions are anticlimactic. Okay? I hope you didn't offend you. Not your wedding, somebody else's wedding. Okay? But we need to teach people that a wedding doesn't make you a wife. The wedding doesn't make you a husband. Can I get an amen? Amen. I mean, legally it does, but you're not going to be a good wife or a good husband just because somebody stood in front of you and said some things and said some words. That's not what's going to make you a good wife or a good husband. Because a lot of times the anticipation of an event is far greater than the actuality of an event. If you graduated from high school, I mean, I don't know how it was for you, but for me, it didn't seem like much happened. I remember just waking up the next day and feeling like, okay, I graduated and feel the same way. Nothing's different. You know, I would even say in some ways, I would say this about the day I became a Christian. Now, don't get me wrong, I believe that the moment I made Jesus Lord and I was baptized into Jesus, that everything changed for me. But it didn't necessarily feel like everything changed. Because when I woke up the next morning, I was still struggling with the same things that I was struggling with before. Those things just didn't go away. And some transitions in life can feel a little bit anticlimactic. It's why when I study the Bible with a young person, I try not to talk too much about baptism because that's really not what it's all about because when you get baptized and that's what you've been working for, then what do you do next? Is it downhill from there? Or are you looking forward to a relationship with God that you're going to carry for the rest of your life? Anybody with me? And so we're here today at a transitional moment. And I mean, it's just the time on the calendar. It's just a series that we decided to do. And we picked this moment and we decided to make a big deal out of it, but it's because it's a new year. 
It's a new page. It's a new beginning. But so what? On one level. Because there's nothing you're going to do tomorrow that you couldn't have done today. You know, there's nothing that you're going to do this year in 2017 that you couldn't have done in 2016. There's nothing that you're going to experience or or do that's going to be any different than something that you couldn't have already done. And so I've been thinking about that, the anticlimactic nature of certain changes in our lives, the fact that you can cross over from high school to college other than just sitting from one side of the room to the other, you know, from being single to being married, from being rich to being poor, and not even notice that you transitioned and not feel it in a way that you had looked forward to it because the experience is much different than the expectation. Do you know what I'm saying? Is it making sense? There are certain things in your life that when you get there, you cross over into them and the experience of being there isn't nearly as great as what you had anticipated when you were going. Now Joshua is a part of a generational transition and I want to teach a little bit this morning because I think it would be important to lay a foundation that we could build on and so we got to go back to Joshua a little bit to find out why this moment was so significant for him because if you don't understand how somebody wandered in the wilderness you will never understand the excitement that they have about their deliverance You look at some people and you go, why are they so fired up for God? Why are they so excited about this thing? Because if you were to look back in their story, you would see the struggle that they went to to get to where they are now. And the reason they're so excited is because they saw God take them from a place that seemed desperate and unlikely. And they saw God do something that was impossible in their life. So if you just come to this verse and you read Joshua and and they step from one place into another, you have no idea the significance of the moment, what's happening. And so I want to back up to Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1, which is a chapter of inspiration, inspiration. Everybody say inspiration. inspiration, where God spoke to Joshua And he said this to him in verse 9 of chapter 1. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I wonder if God would say that to you. I wonder if God's trying to inspire you this morning to say, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Inspiration. That's pretty important. And then chapter two is about investigation. Investigation. Everybody say investigation. Investigation. Where Joshua sends out the spies into the land to see exactly what they're going to be getting themselves into. But he's learned a few lessons from history. Because when Moses sent spies into the land over 40 years before this, he sent 12 spies right? He sent 12 spies to look at the land. Only two came back with a good report. Only two came back with faith. And the other 10 came back with a bad report that actually confined the people to wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. So when it came for t- time for Joshua to send spies, he didn't send 12. He sent Two. Because in the season of transition, you got to shrink your circle to only the people who are going to give you faith as you move forward. Choose wisely who you camp with this year, students. Choose wisely who you camp with this year because if you camp with the wrong crowd, you'll never cross into the right place. Never. And so we have investigation in chapter 2, and in chapter 3, they're camping out, and we've gone past inspiration in chapter 1, we've gone past investigation in chapter 2, and then comes 
instruction. Everybody say instruction. And God is telling Joshua, this is how you're going to do it. This is how you're going to cross over into the land. You're going to do it this way, and you're going to do it that way, and you're going to cross over. He gives them instruction. So we have inspiration, we have investigation, and we have instruction. And you can get stuck in any of these stages and still not cross over. Because just to be inspired by being at church this morning will not bring you over. Our American culture is so much about sitting in a big room, listening to a guy speak on stage, that you don't actually live it out. You're inspired for a few minutes, and then Monday happens, and you've already forgotten what you had learned. It's not what it's about. You're not going to cross over if all, it's all, if all it's about is inspiration. Just to investigate what God wants to do in your life will not bring you over. Even to receive instruction for what God wants to do in your life and what's going to be required of you in this next season will not bring you over. And so you get to chapter 4. And so you get to chapter 4. And this chapter is about initiation. Everybody say initiation. This is your season to initiate. I said, this is your season to initiate, not wait for it, because I don't want to end up on this side of the Jordan for 40 more years. I don't want to be in the same cycles of sin that have kept me in prison for the last three years. So I got to step out into something new. And while the transition is happening, everybody say transition. Transition. There's a geographical picture in the back, and it's in the back of your Bible. If you carry a Bible, if you carry actual physical Bible still, uh, it's still good to do that every now and then. It probably has some maps in the back, right? And most people don't even take the time to ever look at the maps, but they're there. They're there, I promise. There are maps in the back of your Bible And they're important because they show you how the generation, look at this, I even put one up on the screen for you. They show you how the generation who followed Moses out of Egypt went around and around and around. They started out right here. Where they were going was up here. And they went around and around And around, you're not getting it yet because this looks like some of our lives. You're going around and around. And Joshua is the one that's going to finally take them in. And it takes faith to do that. It takes faith to transition. What you need to understand is that the geographical transition, them crossing The Jordan in chapter 4 also illustrates a psychological transition that creates change in our lives. And that might sound really confusing, but let me break it down for you. Because the Israelites who started out as slaves, you have to understand that it was a big deal for them to go from slaves to survivors. That's the first transition. I mean, it's one thing for you to come out of your slavery to your sin and be saved by the grace of God, yet it's a a whole different thing that doesn't encompass everything that God wants for you because now these people are no longer slaves, they're survivors, but God doesn't want them to stay in survival mode. He wants them to be settlers. Settlers. Now we're moving in. Now we're taking over. Now we're crossing. Now we're not just coming out. Now it's not just about all the bad things that I'm not allowed to do anymore, that I follow Jesus. It's about the kingdom that we're called to establish and build and the land that we're called to possess and the curses that we're called to break and the light that we're called to shine. Come on, somebody. Some, I think, I just, I'm going to be honest, I think most people 
are here. You're survivors. There are too many survivors in this room. But I didn't get married to my wife Ayumi just to survive in this world and just to play it safe until we die someday. I married her so that we could take risks and walk into the plan that God had for us. I didn't raise my daughter so that she can live a safe, comfortable life and get we're 401k, get a college degree and do all these things and get debt and do all these things. That's not why I raised my daughter. I want my daughter to grow up and do something significant with their life that changes other people's lives, that lifts up Jesus. But too many of us are stuck in survival mode. And God says, I want you to be a settler. I want you to move forward. I want you to take back territory in the name of Jesus. Everybody say, I'm crossing over. And it takes faith. It takes faith to cross over. It takes faith to break out of this place of certainty. It takes faith to break out of comfortability. It takes faith to wade into the waters of uncertainty. I wonder who has that kind of faith today. It's a certain kind of faith. It's a special kind of faith. It's the kind of faith that only makes sense on the other side. It doesn't make sense when you're going through it. It only makes sense when you get there. The kind of faith that won't make sense right now. I mean, this is a map. Okay, I got rid of the map. Okay, but if you look at the map, it's not just a map, it's, it's a tapestry. You know, if it were a quilt, and I were to show you on one side where the stitches were on a quilt, and it would look chaotic, and it would look confusing, but if you would flip that quilt to the other side, it might... It, it, it might look like something was actually being created, like something was actually being formed. On one side, it didn't make sense, but when you flip that quilt over, there was something that was being drawn, there was something that God was doing in your life that you didn't see, but now you see it once you cross over. Maybe your children are wandering from God and it seems like this doesn't make sense, this is a little chaotic, it's confusing, but if you would have faith to cross over, to get to that point, you would look back and go, I see what God was doing now. I see what he was doing in my life. I don't know why he took that out of my life last year. In fact, it hurt. But if I would flip it over, if I would cross over, I would see what God was doing in my life. But if I give up in the middle, I will never see what he was doing on the other side. That there was a destiny, that there was a design, that there was a reason, there was a purpose, there was a plan. God is doing something in my life, and it will make sense on the other side. Now faith, that takes faith. Moses had the faith to make it out of Egypt and across the Red Sea, but Joshua is going to take us across the Jordan today. How many of you want to cross over to the other side? Let me see a raise of hands. I hope every hand goes up. And we got to go quickly because it takes faith for you to cross over. It can't be a complacent faith. If you want to be comfortable, this is not the place for you. You can't be comfortable. It takes a faith, and I want you to write this down, it takes a faith that looks forward. There are two of these, so it would be good for you to write them down. Take notes. Because you don't want to get to Tuesday and then wish you would have written it down. My faith looks forward. You know, the central part of the text that I will not be able to do justice today in this time is the Ark of the Covenant. And all you really need to know about the Ark of the Covenant is that it represented God's presence. 
There's so much more to it, but I don't have time to jump into it. All you need to know is that the Ark of the Covenant represented the physical presence of God. And they had to take the Ark into the river for the waters to part. And so I want you to look at this. Look at uh, Joshua chapter 3, verse 1. It says, early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim. You've got to be careful how you say that word. And went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. Everybody say crossing over. Before crossing over. You're going to cross over this year. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant, when you see the presence of God and the Levitical priests, the pastors carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and what? Follow it. This is my favorite verse, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. God doesn't want you to stay where you've always been. He wants to take you somewhere where you've never been. God says, I want to take you somewhere this year, and the only way for you to get there is by looking forward, by keeping your eyes on me, by following my presence. But he says, keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits, which is about 10 football fields, between you and the ark. Do not go near it, which is kind of strange because I thought God wanted me to be close to him, right? But I think what he was wanting them to see is that for them to cross over, they needed their eyes to be looking forward at him. So I need faith that looks forward. And it would be helpful for me to point out Moses, the one that spoke to God face to face the one who taught the people how to have a relationship with God, Moses is now gone. He's dead. And one of the reasons transition is so hard in your life is because everybody lost something in this last year. It can be a loved one. It could be a friendship. It can be your job. Some people lost their job this year. Some of you lost a dream last year, and it is in that context, it is in the context of loss that God calls Joshua to cross over to what's next. So the presence of God had to go before the people so that their eyes would be not fixed on what they had lost, but so that their eyes would be fixed on where God was leading them in the days ahead. And I don't know who this is for, but God said, you can't get Moses back. You can't get him back. But if you will fix your eyes forward, I will lead you. That's the word, forward. The way of faith looks forward. Everybody shout, I'm looking forward to it. I want you to shout it again with faith. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hoped for. What I hope for is ahead of me. And whatever is behind me wasn't meant to come with me into this next season. I'm looking forward to it. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, the race that is set in front of you. What's in front of you? Whatever is ahead of me. Because he says, look at Before us, verse 2, looking unto Jesus. Where is Jesus? If I'm following him, then he must be in front of me. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Whatever is ahead of me, he wrote it. So I trust the next chapter because I know the author. I'm looking forward to it. I want to see how this turns out. The author and finisher 
of our faith. And it says in verse 3, or verse 2, it says, For, who, for the joy that was set before him, the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Don't wet, let what's behind you make you miss what's before you. Man, I wish I could get those 40 years back that I wasted. I wish I could have spent more time with this person. I wish I could have did this. I wish I could have done that. But I can't look back at the last 40 years. For the joy set before him, give your faith something to look forward to this year. And don't let it just be heaven when you die. You know, Jesus said, he taught me how to pray. He said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. My faith is looking forward, not to the day when I get out of here, but what he's going to do before I leave, what he's going to do today and tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. And I know there's going to be some unexpected challenges this year. And I know there's going to be some things this year that I wouldn't choose to cross over. But here's the thing. I can't choose every river that I cross. I can't. But I do get to choose what I carry while I'm crossing it. And I mean, I, I mean to tell you that, that there are some things that you can't carry into this next year if you want to cross over. That's why back in, in Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, he's told the people, consecrate yourselves consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you but before he does those amazing things there's some things that you're going to have to get rid of the sin that so easily ensnares you the things that weigh you down for you to run your race for you to move forward for you to look forward you're going to have to to drop some things, some bitterness in your life, unforgiveness, blame. So it said the ark has to go before them, and if they keep their eyes on this ark that's out in the distance and not get stuck right here and to be satisfied to know God on this level, but to look out beyond and say, where next, God? Where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? And so I need a faith that looks forward. But watch this. I also, this is my favorite part today. I need a faith that points back. I need a faith that, that points back. Everybody say points back. Yeah. Points back. Come on, you got to try this. You got to, everybody look forward and I want everybody to point behind you. Now don't hit the person beside you in the face. Everybody point behind you. Look forward and point behind you. Come on, participate. Look forward and point behind you. Don't look back. Don't look back. But while your faith is looking forward, let your finger point back. And whatever you're pointing at that God brought you through is now the evidence of his faithfulness for where he's taking you. Point back. I got a faith that looks forward but looks back, or points back, not looks back. How many of you can point back to something this last year that God did in your life. God told Joshua something interesting. It says in Joshua chapter 4, I'll be closing here in a few minutes, Joshua chapter 4 verse 1, when the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, they had just finished crossing over, the Lord said to Joshua, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan. Now they made it through. You caught that, right? They were already on the other side. And God told them, go back into the middle of the Jordan. Send 12 people back to the middle of the Jordan. And get some stones, 12 stones to be exact, that will, re will, will, will resemble what you went through. 
that's going to prepare you to have faith for what you're going to go through. Go back. When I look back over my life and I see all the doors he's opened for me, when I look back over my life and see all the ways he's saved me and all the ways that he's blessed me, I heard a quote this week from a series. It said, the victories of the past are stepping stones toward greater victories in the future. I'll never forget the moment, and I wasn't even here for this moment. But back in 1997, there was a guy named Robert Lickfelt who talked to my mom in a bar of all places. When she, and my mom, she's intimidating. She could be intimidating. I love her, but she could be scary sometimes, you know. And so she's in this bar, and Robert Lickfelt walks up to her and invites her to church. You know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Robert Lickfelt. That's a stone in my life that I'm going to go back and remember what God did. Because when we were staying in motel rooms, when I was staying in motel rooms with my dad because the arguments got so bad, throwing up out of anxiety, God saw me. And he saw my family. And he used Robert on that night to bring my mom. That's a stone for me. He saved my parents' marriage. I remember the day I got baptized, I was 13 years old. There were some things that I, the decisions that I made, there were some things that were challenging for me, but I remember the day I got restored, I stood here on this stage with a bleached head of hair, and I was restored to God. And it wasn't, this is not about me. I'm just saying, look at what God has done in my life. These are the stones that I got to go back into the Jordan to get because when it gets hard, I got to have the things that I point back to that keep me looking forward at him even when it gets hard. The same God who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear is going to deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine named Goliath. I didn't have to include all that information, but I got a faith that looks forward and points back. I'm pointing back to remind the devil why I'm so confident moving forward. Now you've, you've been getting this backwards, and that's why so many of you are stuck today. You've been, you've been pointing forward and looking back. Because I, I would do it if, if, if I could... You've been pointing forward at what God could do, but, but because of what happened, I'm stuck. But today's the day that you're crossing over. Did you hear? Today, some of you are going to cross over. I hope all of us cross over in your mind to know that God has brought me to this point and I've got 12 stones and I've got all these reasons and I got this foundation. And so God says in, in verse three, take up these stones, these 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan from right where the priests are standing and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So they got to, to the other side, they set up these 12 stones and they got up out of the middle of the Jordan so that it would be a reminder because Joshua said, one day you're going to have some children and your children are going to see these stones. And I'll, Can I share something with you? This really touched me for us as we look forward into this year because I've got one child now. Her name is Hannah. And I realize that in many ways my faith is her foundation. And I'm already thinking about what she's going to see when she crosses over someday. But am I giving her something to stand on to move forward? And the sad thing is, I think so many of us, we're not giving our children something to stand on. We don't share with our kids the good things that God has done. The way he saved me, the way he blessed me. Even when I thought there was no way, he made a way in the middle of the desert. He parted the Red Sea and brought me through. What are you giving to your children to remember, to build their faith on? Now Joshua said, I, I, I said I was closing out, I'm really closing out here. 
because this is what I told guest services. Joshua chapter 4, verse 21. He said to the Israelites, in the future, when your descendants ask their parents, what do these stones mean? Why do you believe what you believe? Why are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Why did you follow him 30 years ago? Why? What do these stones mean? What will you say? What do these stones mean? Tell them Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. That's what you tell them. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. This is important, church. The only way people are going to see the power of God is if we're looking forward and pointing back at what he's done. But that's what you need to tell them. Why is this significant? Think of all the things that they could have told them about what they went through when they, before they crossed over. They could have said anything. Remember when we didn't have meat anymore because we were in the desert? Man, that was really hard. They could have said a lot of things. All the things that they could have said about all the years that they spent in the wilderness. The problem with some of us is that we're more familiar with the details of our wilderness than the details of our deliverance. So when I ask you about your year, what are you going to memorialize? Are you going to memorialize your misery or your miracles? And I'm not discounting there are some horrific things that have happened. But as you move forward, will I memorialize and stay stuck in misery? Or will I point back to the miracles that God has done in my life? And if you choose this year to memorialize all the pain you went through, you're not going to make it to the other side. You're going to stay on this side. But if you'll set up 12 stones and say, you know what, I've been through, I've been through hell this year. You, you don't even need to hear about it, though, because that's not what I want to tell you. I just want to tell you that he didn't just bring me out. He brought me over. Yeah. I've crossed over. Yeah. Anybody crossing over this year? Yeah. Anybody crossing over this year? Yeah. We don't forget. We point back. But we look forward. Now watch this, you're not facing the Jordan anymore. Now you're facing Jericho. Jesus already brought me through the Jordan. He already saved me. He already redeemed me. So now I'm looking at Jericho and I'm telling Jericho, just like God cut off those waters, my God is going to bring these walls down. I'm ready for whatever battle is next. And right now we're going to take the communion, which is a time to remember what Jesus did on the cross that will give us the faith to look forward to what God's going to do this year. Amen? Amen. God, thank you for this morning. I, I just pray that in some way that we could identify with this, God, that we could Look forward and point back. I know that there were some challenging things that went, went on this last year. And then by no means, God, do I want to minimize that. By no means do I want to make it seem like it was no big deal because there were some really challenging things. But God, I still believe that you're not done with us yet. I still believe that there are things that you want to take us into. And so I pray, Father, for the faith. Increase our faith to cross over, to look forward and point back this year. We love you. We honor you. We thank you for the, your son Jesus who shed his blood on the cross so that I could be where I'm at, so that we could be where we're at right now. In Jesus' name, amen.